Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this session. Uh, the main objective of uh, this session uh, is to discuss the mechanism of interest rate determination uh, that is the Fed fund rate determination uh, in the US. The, because the Fed's use of uh, monetary policy uh, uh, tools has such an important impact on interest rates and economic activity not only in the US but across the globe, uh, it is vital, it is important to understand how the Fed wields them in practice and how relatively useful each tool is. So, in recent years, the Federal Reserve has increasingly focused on the Fed fund rate that is interest rate on overnight loans of reserve from one bank to another as the primary instrument of uh, monetary policy. So, as a motivational factor, uh, let me show you some of the newspaper cuttings. So, you can see here that for example, this one. US make most aggressive interest rate hike since 1994. So that means this is I have taken from this date. Uh, so where what you can see here is that the facing highest inflation over 40 years, US Fed Reserve has raised the target range of Fed fund rate by 75 basis point to 1.50 to uh, 1.750. So, from this uh, what we can see that the Fed fund rate that is the interbank um, uh, the interest rate on overnight loans of reserves from one bank to another. So, we can also call that Fed fund rate that is FFR uh, is nothing but the interbank uh, loan rate, interbank uh, loan rate that is overnight very short term. Uh, so, that actually the central bank is fixing uh, it at a, a target range uh, because you know that this rate is determined by the demand and supply by the banking system right because the demand by those banks who needs reserve uh, those who those who is show deficit of the reserve and to meet the reserve requirement is borrowing from another bank uh, who is having surplus of funds so this actually finally determined by the market forces market for demand for supply and demand for the demand and supply demand for reserve and supply of reserve what the federal reserve system is doing here is that they are fixing a target range that means here the target range is uh, 1.50 to 1.750 percentage 1.5 percentage to uh, 1.75 rate five percentage and actually then in the, the transaction between uh, banks that determine the rate. So, what the central bank is doing here is that they are applying uh, the monetary policy tool that is the open market operation uh, that we are going to see uh, the open market operation uh, discount loans and cash reserve requirements setting the reserve requirements so that it can the rate the effective rate can fall between 1.5 and 1.75. So, finally, the rate is determined by demand and supply uh, of uh, supply of reserves. So, we can also see that uh, from this that means um, a further rise of 50 or 75 basis point is expected in July uh, bringing the total increase for this year is going to be 2, 2 to 2.25 percentage points something that seemed unthinkable just a few months ago. So, what we can see that uh, Fed this month they, they are also going to meet uh, this month in the month of July. Uh, so, markets discounting market is anticipating that uh, there will be 75 uh, uh, percentage points uh, interest rate hike amid inflation because there is uh, a fear of uncertainty about uh, fear of uh, about the recession in the US. Uh, this is uh, how this is the recent uh, news, in the news about the the news uh, reason one about the uh, uh, Fed fund rate. Then see for example, uh, March uh, 2022 that means uh, Federal Reserve raises, uh, raises interest rate for first time since 2018. 
so because of the covid crisis and all uh, there was uh, almost a pause of uh, fed fund rate and they raised it one the fed approved a 0.2 percent per rate increase since 2018 there was no uh, raise in uh, fed fund rate since 2018 since and it was in uh, march 2022 uh, that was they approved a 0.25 percentage point uh, hike in the fed fund rate so this is the thing the fomc set a 0.25 and to uh, 0.50 percentage as the new target range for the fed fund rate that is the key benchmark borrowing rate that influence anything from auto loans to credit card rates to yields certificated deposits and savings accounts so from this um, uh, we see that uh, the fed fund rate that's the newspaper that they reported uh, that means fed fund rate has influence on other rates you just simply uh, recall what we discussed in previous session while de discussing the theories of interest rate uh, looking at the uh, term structure and risk structure we have seen that interest rates move together almost right so that means each interest rate uh, each of them are high there is highly correlated high correlation coefficient we can see and that means fed fund rate has influence on uh, all the other rate of interest through that line so look at for example in october 2009 um, the fed open market committee lowers its benchmark rate by 25 po basis points to a range of uh, 1.5 percentage to 1.75 percentage as expected you just see on november 2020 uh, fed holds rate near zero that means here is that benefits uh, that means the fed fund rate is they've set up is almost zero that is the fed fund rate is uh, just uh, zero uh, they set up that means that is the target uh, fed fund rate so from this uh, cutting we can see that we are using the term different terms uh, one is called fed fund rate uh, then another term is that uh, target uh, fed fund rate and the third one is we are going to see effective fed fund rate so coming to this one let me explain this one by one what does it mean so the about the fed fund rate it means the interest rate between interest rate for inter interbank loans that is the interbank loans rate that is the overnight loans uh, for reserve uh, by maybe uh, among bank banks so that means uh, this is the interest rate for very short term loans uh, uh, by uh, by one bank giving to another bank uh, which is taken for meeting the reserve requirement that is the fed fund rate federal fund rate uh, then called the target fed fund rate um, target fed fund rate for example we can see that if it is uh, uh, 2 to uh, 2.25 uh, that means um, the central bank the reserve bank the federal reserve system they expect that they wanted the uh, fed fund rate to fall somewhere between this and this that means between uh, 2 and 2.5 percentage that is the target so when the fomc is announcing um, the fed fund rate actually they are not uh, announcing the actual uh, fed fund rate because they cannot really determine actually they cannot determine uh, the actual uh, rate of fed fund rate because that is determined by the demand for and supply of uh, reserve by the banking system that is actually interbank the market force uh, determine the actual fed fund rate but what uh, the federal reserve system can do that it can plan target uh, between this that we have uh, between a range actually it can it need to fall between 2 and 2.2.25 that is the target fed fund rate this is what we read in the newspaper uh, that is about the as a fomc decision then comes the effective fed fund rate so the effective fed fund rate means because there are for example the uh, among these uh, for 3000 4000 bank 4000 5000 bank uh, there will be some banks um, uh, bank a and bank b so there will be a transaction here right so there will be they will be supplying here and they will be demanding a uh, reserve here so it is between just between them so suppose their rate of interest is for example the, the rate at which uh, bank a borrow from bank b is for example 2.01 percentage and similarly another bank bank c and uh, bank c, d uh, they may be settling their transaction for a rate for example 0 0.02 and similarly bank e and 
and bank F their transaction suppose the bank rate the fed fund rate between them because they directly make their transaction right it may be falling somewhere between this so what we do that uh, we calculate the effective fed fund rate the, that is the average of all these rate all these rate means the what are the transaction happening that uh, for example the transaction between uh, these uh, 3000 4000 banks uh, that actually we are taking the average the average of the actual uh, fed fund rate uh, in each transaction uh, among the banks between the banks uh, that we are going to take and we are going to call this one as uh, the effective fed fund rate that is actually what the uh, FOMC wanted, but actually they cannot, they cannot determine that is determined by the market forces that the demand and supply forces in the uh, reserve market. Uh, so, here accordingly the FOMC fix a target between this one, uh, the for example this one and then using the tools the um, uh, monetary policy tool they were able to ensure that the actual Fed fund rate falls between these two that the lower range and upper range. So, you can see look at for example this diagram uh, figure you can see that uh, this is the movement of effective Fed fund rate uh, which we just uh, meant I just mentioned here. So, you can see here that actually uh, 2007 uh, before the crisis it was very high. Uh, that means when the economy is at the peak normally the rate of interest will be very high uh, and then because the crisis started then the fed fund rate they reduce uh, the target they, they reduce accordingly the effective rate also decline this is this bar the gray bar is the recession period here also recession period is there a mild recession which this also we discussed in one of the previous session uh, so, you can see that the FFR has been has declined, the effective Fed fund rate became almost near to 0 here. Uh, then again after 2016, uh, they gradually raised the uh, Fed fund rate, target rate. Accordingly, the Fed funds rate effective rate also increased. Then again uh, after 2018, uh, the Fed reduced, Federal Reserve System reduced the target for Fed fund rate, target rate. Uh, then accordingly, you can see that during covid time uh, you can see that is almost near to zero the e active now you can see that what we have seen that the last uh, few months that means again uh, since um, there is a huge in, uh, uh, mounting inflation uh, in the us and uh, as a result they raised the and the economy is back from uh, the covid pandemic uh, not only in the us and across the globe um, so as a result there was pressure to increase uh, the Fed fund rate, the interest rate that is what we are seeing now. The, so, the, accordingly the effective fund rate also increasing. This is the target range also I am giving here in this um, grey colour. Uh, that means the range actually given the lower limit for example this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit is here. So, you can see here that the lower limit and the upper limit. So, this is the Fed fund rate. Um, rate and the you can see the effective rate effective fed fund rate is falling between that is actually determined by the market that i may state a couple of times here that is determined by the market forces right the demand for and supply of reserve so it's falling between you can see that it is falling between this range uh, this is the volume uh, also you can see here and I would suggest you visit uh, Federal Reserve website and you will get uh, all this related data and how Fed fund rate, the target rate, effective Fed fund rate and the lower limit and the upper limit etc. Uh, this is the very reason one I have just taken only for the last two years uh, just to show that the lower limit and upper limit to highlight this one this is the upper limit, uh, upper limit and this is the lower limit. Uh, to highlight this. Now, after March 2022, you can see that upper limit became uh, this one, the here, this is the upper, upper, upper limit and sorry, this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit, right. So, this is for again very recently just for last one year. Uh, so, you can see that they are the after March 2022, uh, in every a FOMC meeting which they meet uh, every eight, eight, eight times in a year. So, you can see that uh, they increase the Fed fund rate lower limit and lower limit and upper limit. 
and in another meeting then further they increase the lower limit and upper limit and again in july uh, this month july they increase the uh, rate of the lower limit to here and the upper limit to here so that means uh, from this what we can see that when they are increasing the lower limit and upper limit there is nothing but they are uh, increasing the fed fund rate especially the fomc is increasing the uh, target fed fund rate uh, accordingly the market forces uh, they will be forced uh, the it will be making an artificial influence uh, on the demand and supply aspects of the reserve and accordingly the effective fund fund rate has fallen in this range so this is some some more uh, data about the uh, effective fed fund rate so you can see that uh, in two, uh, 2019 for example the rate was this much but in two, 2021 the rate became uh, 0.07 this is the effective fed fund rate so the, the rate at which uh, one bank borrow from another So again, I'm showing you some more um, to give you the idea that the effective Fed fund rate. Um, so let us see uh, why this uh, Fed fund rate uh, it is attracting uh, so much importance, news uh, news importance uh, across the world because this Fed fund rate is the most powerful interest rate in the world, and not only the Federal Reserve System is one of the most powerful central bank in the global world. Uh, it is the most powerful interest rate in the world the fed fund rate is one of the most powerful interest rate uh, in the world as well the interest rate uh, banks charge as i we already discussed this is the rate uh, uh, banks charge each other to lend federal reserve funds overnight and it's a short term interest rates and one of the thing is that how this short term interest rate is uh, because this is the bank rate right the, the interbank rate this is the rate at which uh, one bank borrow from another bank uh, to meet their uh, reserve requirement uh, but this rate is related to the uh, interest rate of the uh, rest of the interest rate as well at this rate uh, banks also base the prime rate on their fed fund rate that means bank charge their best customers uh, the prime rate so this is the rate at which uh, banks charge their uh, best customers and we can also see that there is some uh, addition for example in proposed be using this as the base rate um, these are the base rate plus they will be adding uh, to when they charge for example from their prime customer uh, if it's very short term they will be charging almost same but additionally uh, if the long term they will be by charging some uh, some percentage point additional so i have seen in some places that it is three percentage higher uh, to the uh, base of this fed fund rate so that means uh, we can see that um, if the Fed fund rate is declining uh, when the Fed fund rate is declining from uh, reduced from for example uh, 3 percentage to for example to uh, 1 percentage then you know that actually that 2 percentage difference that actually the uh, best customers uh, the loyal customers um, loyal customers of the bank also get that 1 or 2 percentage deduction right so that means that is how the fed fund rate also affects most of the other interest rates in the economy now let us recall the um, our term structure and the risk structure of the interest rate where we we have seen that uh, interest rate each interest rates are highly correlated so that a uh, longer term interest rate also are indirectly influenced right this is the short term so this one also uh, first fed fund rate has influence on uh, interest on interest rate on the uh, prime customers uh, prime customers then that also has we also seen that it also has influence on long term interest rate you just recall our um, uh, term structure of interest rate so refer the term structure and the structure of interest rate so that means um, the changes in fed fund rate has influence uh, across uh, influence across other interest rate uh, that the um, government treasury rate and that the long term and short term plus the private uh, short term and long term in addition uh, it also has influence uh, on the uh, global rate of interest global rate of interest for example what the one of the implication that you can see that when the ffr has been increased by in the us when ffr has been increased then you can see that uh, there will be uh, if a global uh, financial capital out inflow to the us uh, capital inflow 
into the US, capital inflow into the US and decline in capital outflow to the rest of the world. So, when we can see for example, now when FFR is increasing, uh, many countries including India, uh, India, India's capital market is get affected. When the Fed fund rate is uh, increasing, we can see that India's um, capital, capital inflow uh, declines, capital inflow uh, declines and at the same time uh, our capital outflow. So, whoever has invested in Indian government bonds for example, they uh, pull back their money uh, not only from India from other emerging economies also they pull back, they withdraw their money and it moves back to uh, US right, right because there the interest rate has increased. So, this has no as in order to counter this some countries they increase their domestic interest rate as well. Suppose if we see that our there is a um, huge capital outflow from India to US and whoever has invested from the US in the Indian uh, capital market they are all taking back or withdrawing this money back then uh, taking back then obviously we also will be forced to increase our rate of interest so that uh, to reduce the magnitude of capital uh, outflow right similarly other countries for example china they also respond because they also see that if uh, ffr has been increased uh, there is a risk of uh, capital outflow so in order to counter this uh, other countries also start uh, increasing uh, rate of interest so that means uh, the, what i want to say here is that uh, the rate of in fed fund rate it not only has uh, effect in the US itself, it also has simply impact on the rest of the world and the across the global economy as well. So, this again I am showing the low upper limit and lower limit. Um, so, now uh, we are in a better position uh, to discuss how the Fed fund rate is uh, determined. So, during normal times uh, they use mainly 3 tools uh, that is called conventional tool to control the money supply and interest rate and federal reserve in the normal time uh, not in any financial crisis or recession time in the normal time they use mainly three tools one is uh, open market operations and the other one is uh, discount lendings and the third one is uh, reserve requirements. Uh, this we have already mentioned in the uh, previous sessions as well, these are the three uh, widely used tools. In India, we refer uh, these tools as quantitative tools of monetary policy that is open market operation, uh, discount lending and reserve requirements. So, then this the question here comes, why Fed fund market first of all, why such a market? So, why would banks trade in the Fed market? That is a, some of the question that we are going to answer here while discussing the Fed fund rate determination. Then how the transaction how been settled and what are the procedures in open market operations. So coming to why would banks trade in Fed fund market? Actually they trade in the Fed fund market uh, in order to meet their reserves because the reserve requirement in the US is that. Uh, based on the size of the bank, the banks with uh, deposits having deposit uh, maximum 16.3 million uh, if, uh, until then uh, this much 0 to uh, 16.3 million uh, they do not have to keep any reserve with the banks uh, central bank they do not need to keep any required reserve no mandatory reserve but banks with a deposit ranging from 16.3 million to 124.4 million they have to keep 3 percentage uh, of their total deposit as reserve with the bank central bank. Then those banks with uh, 124.2 million above that they are required to keep 10 percentage as reserve. So, based on the volume the size of the bank that means we can say that mainly the uh, liability that they are having if it is uh, let us call this one as the smaller bank for example just because the liability the size of the bank is small the liability is small uh, they have to keep only 3 percentage and this bank they need to keep 10 percentage. Then you know that um, they it is mandatory for them that to ensure that this much reserve uh, is kept in the bank uh, at the end of the business day. So mainly mainly these banks they those who have to keep 10 percentage they most time they confront with the deficit in meeting the reserve requirement and this bank uh, because of that they 
are always in deficit most of the time they are deficit uh, with uh, meeting the reserve so they will be demanding a uh, reserve they will be demanding a reserve in the banking market a reserve market and this bank the small banks uh, we can say that they actually need to keep only 3 percentage so normally we can expect that as compared to uh, this large bank they will be having uh, some surplus uh, not only that the big banks large banks they will be having they, they are actually well developed and well structured bank as compared to the smaller banks uh, they will be having more investment opportunities and they will be seeing more productive use of their resource than instead of putting uh, that 10 percentage of their money in the uh, in the fed right they have more productive uses so they will be employing they are finding better opportunity for their fund liabilities uh, deposit money so that is with the large banks but the small banks sometimes they won't find uh, better uh, investment opportunities for their fund so then accordingly they will be having some surplus then they will be uh, supplying uh, a reserve in the uh, interbank rate this is one explanation why uh, there is bank trade in fed fund market and how the transactions have been settled it is mainly through the uh, fed account the transaction has been uh, settled through uh, fed account and so that it is much easier for um, a bank lending from by one bank to another if for example bank if bank for example this bank is having a deficit with the reserve uh, because Uh, both banks uh, that is uh, small banks and uh, uh, large banks all the all of them have are having account with the fed federal resource system so the transaction can be uh, easily uh, settled between them through the fed so if they are having a deficit they come to know immediately they can borrow from uh, small banks and within a um, matter min- a couple of minutes uh, the transaction will be settled and they can fulfill for example the banks with a deficit in the uh, reserve they can immediately uh, fulfill uh the resource requirements so uh, what we have covered just an overview just a basic aspects of uh, some basic concept with regard to the uh, fed fund rate uh, in the next session uh, we will see how by using all the tools of monetary policy and uh, using all the tools of monetary policy how fed fund rate will be determined thank you and see you in the next session